there was a man, a rahib, a monk, who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his temple for 60 years. So a woman came in his presence and he started to develop an attachment to this woman and he ended up committing zina with her and he stayed in that state for six nights. What happened to this man as he came to that realization? Their eyes are wide and they're paying attention now and they say, how did this happen? Where am I? How could I have fallen like this? So this man was not caught. The woman was not pregnant. He could have disappear, and let's pretend this never happened, and worried about the people that would find out. Instead, look at the sincerity of his tawbah, the man himself woke up. He ran away. He went to another masjid, which is a very smart move. You don't escape from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, except to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I need to start over and I need to beg Allah for forgiveness, but I need to get out of here. So he went from his own masjid, the one that he used to worship Allah in, to another masjid. So he went to that masjid, and he took residence in that masjid for three days, and he did not eat anything for three entire days. It's not that he was starving himself, it's not that he was trying to commit suicide. It's that he was so immersed in his repentance that he was not even eating or drinking. He wasn't paying attention to his food and his drink. Which is a testimony to the man's sincerity in this case. This man sitting in the masjid now for three nights, crying over what he committed for six nights, not even thinking about the 60 years that preceded those six nights. Because right now, those six nights obscured all of those years of worship to him. Begging Allah for forgiveness. So some people noticed him in the masjid. They brought to him a loaf of bread. And they told him, Ya Fulan, oh so and so, you haven't eaten, go ahead and eat your bread. He broke the bread into two pieces. He gave one half of it to someone on his right, one half of it to someone on his left. And the man continued to immerse himself in seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that very moment, Allah sent the angel of death in that moment to him and took his soul. So he died in the masjid, in a state of repentance, the place where he started. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his 60 years of worship on one side of a scale. And Allah put that six nights of adultery on the other side. The six nights were heavier than his 60 years of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, don't void your charity. Sometimes charity, good deeds can be voided. So those six nights voided his 60 years. Allah brought forth that piece of bread and then put the bread on one side of the scale with his six nights of sin, the bread outweighed his six nights of adultery and entered him into Jannah. So the first lesson we take from this is that concept. How many people are affected by my sins? Are they between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm actively working on them? Or are they affecting other people? And then you look at your good deeds and the best good deeds are not just the ones that affect yourself, but that affect the people around you. So his sin only impacted himself. But his good deed was to others. The man recognized himself before he was caught by others. One of the greatest tragedies of sin is when you wait for someone else to stop you than stopping yourself. I got away with it once, I kept on doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. When a person commits a sin, the most powerful motivating factor to quit that sin needs to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and nothing else. And in the situation of this man, he did not wait to be caught, he caught himself. The third thing we learn from this, the good deed that preceded his sin did not avail him of any good on the Day of Judgment. The good deed that comes after his sin did help him and make his case to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So make sure you follow up your sin with a good deed.
Now shaitan comes to you and he tells you one of two things. Either, what's the point of doing good deeds now? You should just despair for the rest of your life. You're a filthy, horrible human being. Or even worse, why don't you just keep sinning now? Or sin to cover up for your sin and keep digging yourself into this hole. You might as well, you're already deep in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls you to His karam and jood, His generosity and benevolence and His mercy, even in your lowest moments. Do not let the shaitan or your lowliness or your false sense of guilt lead to despair. Instead, see what you can do now to compensate for that which you've committed. And finally, subhanAllah, if you look at the sin versus the hasana that he did. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But let the beauty of your tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let it be a beautiful repentance. We also see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of mercy to this person, Allah set him up in a situation where he could do some good. He didn't go out and look for sadaqah. But Allah pushed that charity towards him due to the goodness that Allah saw inside of him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, when Allah loves a person, He guides him right before his death and overlooks his entire life of disobedience. Some people of goodness, they have good, but they don't have hidayah yet. They don't have guidance yet. There's something missing. The, the, the essential ingredient is missing. And Allah Jal implants it in those last moments of their life in order to do away with everything that preceded it.